I, I'm curious about you were a contestant on ESPN's Dream oh, Job. Man. Yeah, early wow, you're on. going back. Yeah. Was, was that during or, or after college? Right after college. I had just graduated. And how was that experience? Did it did it lead to other opportunities? Did it help you to to land at ESPN later on in your career? Like did it did it build some sort of uh were you able to build some connections through that? I, I think it helped. Um, it, it definitely helped. It, it led me to Al Jaffe. It got me in front of Al Jaffe, who was uh, at the time the head of talent there. And um, you know, he made it clear to me then that I had made an impression on him, even though I didn't win. There was a part of me, and, and I can say this now, I'm not sure I wanted to win. And, and what I mean by that is it would be hubris to say at 22 I was ready for that, but there were things that happened during the course of the show where you get a sense of, I think I know what they're looking for. I think I know what to expect. It is a TV show and a lot of it is a simulation and it unfolded like a TV show. They're playing up storylines and drama and all that stuff. I looked at the big picture, uh, zoom out macro, um, if I win this thing, would this help my career five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now? And we all know first impressions can be lasting impressions. And you go to ESPN at 22, you're not ready. That opportunity to get there again, if you're not renewed or not kept, may not come again because you've already cast your impression on those folks. So having gone to Syracuse and you hear about paying your dues and all that stuff, yeah, it felt a little like, am I doing that? And so I had some... You know, freelance opportunities afterwards. I had some opportunities that in the short term made sense. Um, I decided to kind of think long term and ended up applying and getting a job, applying for and getting a job in Yakima, Washington after that market 126. I was essentially a, a one man sports department in a split market, did everything from you know, anchoring, reporting, live shots, producing, writing, logging footage, editing, and I probably owe Yakima um, more than I can ever repay. Uh, wasn't the greatest place to live. Uh, I felt homesick coming in from the East Coast. But that gave me, I think, uh, a foundation. It helped me find my voice. It, it probably accelerated uh, my growth as a broadcaster. Um, so, yeah, uh, going back to ESPN later, having that connection, having known Al Jaffe and uh, when I had sent him a tape um, at my next job, I just said, hey, I, I'd love to just get some feedback on my work. And he said, I remember seeing your last tape. Send me your next sportscast. We might have some openings. And you know, that's kind of how ESPN happened. Being that dream job was um, a, a TV show first, did it feel when you were on it like uh, an honest judge of talent? Uh, I, yeah, I think there were certain aspects of it where – you know, the things that at the time were valued, like writing and delivery and reading highlights and sports knowledge, uh, things like that, you know, you can't fake that stuff. You don't have right. a writer. You don't have somebody doing that stuff for you. But you know, we're not doing an hour show. I remember when I started at ESPN News, all of a sudden my first week, I'm doing three hour shows on ESPN News four or five days a week. I probably logged more airtime than I had in my previous six months at my last job in Syracuse yeah. where I'm doing two, three minutes a night. So I think from that standpoint, it's hard to simulate the real thing, but it's a very, very abridged cliff notes version of some of what you would get if you were to be at ESPN. Was the goal play by play at that point or, or was it to be an anchor? You know, it's funny. It was play by play out of college. It was play by play, play by play. And then dream job happened. And I have never been somebody who this is going to sound weird, who marks endpoints and says, I have to do this at this age. I've got to get here. I've got to get here. I've always been a, Hey, this is a pretty cool detour. I'm going to follow that road and see right. where it leads because I like the trees and I like the foliage. And sometimes the detour becomes the destination. So dream job happened and it took me on the studio anchoring path. And all of a sudden I was able to fast track a little bit and it got me to ESPN, what, three, four years later. So I said, all right, 
we'll we'll try this. And then the opportunity to do play by play came up at ESPN. And that's where I got the itch again. Oh, I remember now how much I like this. And then I started bothering some of their people. What can I do to get more opportunities?